it gets popped on here. And today, let's talk about the rework of this build that will, I think, catapult it to new heights. Now, if you're a long-term viewer, you might be wondering, pal, usually your leak starter is only there to complete everything, and then you move on to the next build once you have a little bit of currency. And while that is true, I think I've found something that is just actually really strong and it might be considered my second build it might be like a considered a rework of the first build whatever it is i think we found something cool credit on this one also goes to void 241 a buddy and mod of mine that basically put together the very bare bones version of this build and showed it to me on stream see when the leak started there were a ton of different versions of Archmage that popped up right but the two biggest ones were ball lightning and ice nova frostbolts and for me personally, I tested both before. Obviously, Garafa is a good build maker, so I wanted to know what that's about. And in general, it just does more single target damage than Ball Lightning, but it has a two-button playstyle. So in that sense, I was very happy with Ball Lightning. Once again, we completed everything in the game. I didn't move on yet, and that is because I did something here with Kitavas first. Now, I'm only pressing one button currently. Uh, no Arcanist Sprint needed, no second button needed. And that is because we're using Frostbolt in Kitavas first. For the uninitiated, this used to be our four curse setup. And all we basically had to do is go to two curses and put the other ones in an Arcanist brand right here. Go to four curses. And now what we have in here is simply Frostbolt and Greater Volley. Now, one of my biggest weaknesses as a build creator is that if I hear a lot of people that I trust uh, say a certain thing is always true, I will usually assume they're right. I usually don't even go and test it. And in this case, that kind of bite me in the ass because when it comes to Kitavas first, the problem with automating Ice Nova on it used to be for me that uh, it's inconsistent or something, right? 50% chance to trigger. And I didn't realize, like, with this much cast speed, you don't even feel the difference, right? You saw here, there was a short period at the start where I'm basically not casting a Frostbolt, but it happens almost never. And also, you still cast Ice Nova. You're still killing things, right? That's the thing. You don't... Even if you don't get the proc, even if you get unlucky, you're, you're still killing stuff. The second thing that I did not understand was that you do not need returning projectiles, which was one of the deterrents for me to ever try this out. You don't need it. You can still have double curse automated in your setup. All you need is Frostbolt and Greater Volley. The cast that you have finish way before the Frostbolts ever go off screen. You do not need to cluster the Frostbolts together. They are going to finish their casts regardless. So if you just have a stream of Frostbolts over and over, you do not need them to return. You do not need them to get slower projectiles or anything like that. This is all you need. Now, after all the blabbering, I'm just going to uh, show you a map to kind of explain what I'm in. So once again, this is basically like the ball lightning version, one button, but yeah, just better because you can automate it. You don't have to press anything. This is how it looks like. This is all you have to do. No Arcanist brand, no self-cast Frostbolt, no aiming, which is the biggest thing, by the way. Uh, I don't know. I will have to edit that in before because I just thought about it. Like, the, just the fact that you don't have to aim anything is ridiculous. I'm also quickly going to uh, show you the other uh, MTX because this is obviously very oppressive. So without MTX, um, this is how it looks like. A lot clearer for example if you want to do tier 17s it's way easier to kind of like know what's going on right here uh and then on top of that there's also another mtx that i have not really tried myself but it's i think so old that i still have it put this on Let's see how this looks yeah this looks a little bit obnoxious i'm not gonna lie i'm just going to i mean <laughs> okay celestial is also obnoxious but i'm just going to uh finish with this i just i just love how it looks i know it I know it's much, but yeah. So this is all you do. Literally just automate it. I, honestly, just try it out. Just try it out. It is a blessing. And I will talk about this in a second, but not much changes about the build. I know it looks like a old build now, but it isn't, right? We have Archmage supported with it. So there's just absolutely no reason to do anything else. This is literally how you play it. Um, the only thing that changes is that, is that specific items that say with cold skills or with lightning skills, you have to now swap out. But those are basically only jewels. Um, and there's a few other things that I've reworked, like defense, that we're also going to talk about here in a second. But that has nothing to do with the uh, skill itself. So we're just going to pop this guy real quick. And uh, pour it out. Yeah, so this is how it looks like. So what has changed? Like I said, you want to have Frostbolt with Greater Volley. Greater Volley is important for more overlaps because they're casting next to each other. We have more than enough AoE once again. 
do not need any returning projectile or any shenanigans. Uh, every spell echo is finishing their cast before it cannot hit a single target. If you look here again, you will see that it has long finished before the AoE ever rounds out. It is still going to hit a single target. Now, if you just want to grab the POB, this is where you can basically stop and check it out. Uh, if you want to see the defensive rework with Lore Weave, uh, Eternal Damnation, and also Corrupted Soul, you can jump ahead. It's going to be in the timestamps. But the most important thing I want to drive home is that this is still a lightning build. And that is because Archmage is dealing most of our damage. You see, for example, that in my main setup, I still have Awakened Lightning Pin. And that is because if you go to POB and you can see in Calc, actually, how much percentage of the damage is dealt in Cold and how much in Lightning. My cold damage goes from 15 to 23k and my lightning from 96 to 124k. So a good 80 to 90% of my damage is still lightning. So this means that you're totally good to go. It's still a lightning skill, um, but it uses a cold skill. So one thing that does change is that on jewels, for example, stuff that says crit multi with lightning skills now doesn't work anymore. Crit multi with cold skill does. So that is I think the only thing that I changed in total, obviously I also changed the tree around. We're going to talk about that in a second. That doesn't really have anything to do uh, with the Ice Nova itself though. Now, levels on Ice Nova don't really matter. The Ice Novas right now are absurdly expensive. Now, normal Ice Nova Frost pulled, pretty normal for like a meta Transfigure gem, right? 70C. But then let's look at a 21 gem, right? A 21 with no quality, 3 divines with quality, 3 divines. Do not pay this under any circumstances. If you really want to upgrade, sure. But if I look here in POB, right? If you really want to know just how much how much damage this adds, going back to saying that Archmage is most of your damage, if I increase the level by one, you can barely see the damage increase. We're talking like 2% more damage. Now, one other thing I want to add is that cast speed is extremely important, even more important on this version than anything else. And that is because not just of Frostblink of Wintry Blast, but also because you can not hit sometimes, right? Like, for example, if I cast here, in this case, I did hit. But if I didn't hit for like one or two times, you don't wanna want that to happen during mapping, right? You saw my mapping was very smooth. And that is because I very much focus on these. I have a profane wand and I also targeted cast speed with an essence. I also have cast speed on this ring and Nathema's cast speed, right? So all of that good stuff. Currently, I do not have action speed though, so that is still something I have to work on. And the last small thing that changed is basically what we put into our helmet. We now have... Greater Volley with Frostbolt in our helmet. And we put the two curses that used to be here on an Arcanist brand with Assassin's Mark and Punishment. Now, which ones you put where is up to you. For me personally, these are not the weakest ones. I think Assassin's Mark is very strong, but it only hits one enemy. So it kind of fits perfectly on an Arcanist brand. Whereas both Enfeeble and Ellie Weak hit everything. Also, I guess real quickly, in case you've never played this build before, actually, the way Ice Nova Frostbolt works is you get more damage with hits and ailments when it's cast on a Frostbolt and it can expand from up to four Frostbolts. So this is why it's so strong to actually automate this skill because then you only have to press one button, the Frostbolt shoots out and all the Ice Novas are basically procking off of it. Uh, it also gets less AoE though. So you, since we have Hero Fan, that's not a big deal, but that is usually a, a downside that you have to negate so you're still overlapping. Now, if I put Frostbolt out right here, you can see that even when you're not proccing your Frostbolt, you are still, like, it's still a huge AoE, and you're still going to kill more, like, most normal mobs or magic mobs that are around here. It is just that against everything else, the Frostbolt is just, it's ridiculous damage. Now, if people want to, I'll probably make a full new leak starter guide, not just for people who are just starting out right now, uh, or for people who want to merge these builds, kind of, but there might also be an incentive to rework the guide eventually completely from ball lightning into this if it actually works out early game like i said right now i just respect into it when i had crit and everything worked out that's easy enough you could probably slap on most skills in there but i'll have to test it out if i really want to for example rework uh, the max roll guide or something like that but right now this is what i recommend now let's get into the defensive setup that i did now when you import the pob you might notice that my defenses have gone up slightly it's actually way more than just three times as tanky than before it's actually like more like five, six, seven against physical hits. And also against big hits, it's probably, I don't know, 10 times as tanky. Uh, and that is because we went for an old classic that is Lore Weave plus Eternal Damnation. So what Lore Weave does is it sets your resistance at, at 78. This basically overwrites, for example, stuff like map mods that give you minus to maximum resistances. If you have minus 11, you're still at 78. It overwrites everything. It just says 78. 
You also cannot increase it. So, if, for example, you're not going to use any of the flasks. Taste of Hate we're still using because the physical taken as cold is really strong, but your other LE flasks are going to be useless. It also has a ton of other stats. Life, mana, LE damage, crit, even all attributes. Basically everything you want and a little bit of it. It also has armor, energy shield base, which is the perfect base. It doesn't have that much, but just a nice package of small things on top. Now, where this chest gets incredibly good is with Eternal Damnation, which basically says gain additional LE damage reduction equal to half of your Chaos Res, which in my case, I'm capped, so it's 75. Divide that by half and you have 37.5 LE damage reduction, probably rounds down to 37%. But the big downside is minus five max res, which does not matter, once again, because your lore weave basically just sets it at 78, no matter what, so you're getting an a huge huge defensive layer for alley damage and for physical damage there's really two setups now that you have lore weave and eternal damnation a lot of people will say now you need fizz taken as right like for example taste of hate 15 percent of the fizz damage i take gets converted to cold which means all this damage reduction applies and also your resistances apply however i actually found armor to be more efficient in this case especially if you have a um, glorious vanity that also gives you some armor and fizz damage reduction but both versions are viable. However, if you went with that version, you would have to cut one of your wands, which at that point, the build would just feel pretty bad. I would stick with this version. So what I did is I replaced Purity of Elements with Determination, and I've swapped back to Soul of the Brine King. Now, with Soul of the Brine King, I'm still Freeze Immune, I'm half Chill Immune, and I'm also half kind of Shock Immune. So basically, the effects of these ailments will get reduced on you. After the changes and after you have so much damage reduction, I'm actually not really getting affected by those anymore. However, do note that if you want to, you can take these four points right here, which I might do eventually, and you're actually going to be fully chill and shock immune. Now, determination alone is not enough, though, because you also need a granite flask with some increased armor, which is very strong while, it, while it's up. But on top of that, we also went for the tried and true energized armor set up on the left side right here. So there is Faith and Steel right here. We have the Sanctum of Thought. And um, basically within this radius, so all the energy shield that's in here gets converted to armor at 200% of its value. So for example, if there's 10% energy shield, you get 20% armor instead. And as you can see down here from my armor values, it goes from like 23k to 30k. Now I want you to be... Uh, totally clear. The reason this doesn't show up in the effective hit pool is because the game already assumes you have 90% phase damage reduction, which is true against smaller hits, but against bigger hits, having more and more armor is definitely strong. Going this route also means we have 30% reduced extra damage taken from critical strikes. One big combo right here is also this with 10% of phase damage from hits taken as chaos damage, uh, plus the 10% of armor also applies to chaos damage. So that is kind of a combo that a lot of people are using to get even tankier. Now, a very strong finish here is Corrupted Soul. Basically, you need a glorious vanity that has blah, 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 sacrifice in the name of Doriani. If you have Doriani, uh, whatever keystone is in the in this radius right here will get converted to Corrupted Soul. And what it does is 50% of non-chaos damage taken bypasses energy shield, which sounds like a downside. But you also get 15% of maximum life as energy shield. So you might look at this and you might think, ah, oh, that's like 500 energy shield. Is that really worth the downside? But it is the downside, especially not on mind over matter builds. See, the way it works is mind over matter says 40% of damage is taken from mana before life. It doesn't know anything about energy shield. So what happens with Corrupted Soul right here is if you take 100 damage, now what will happen is 50 will go to the energy shield and then the other 50 normally would go to life because 50% of the damage goes through. However, that gets split again because you have mind over matter 40% and then 10% from your ascendancy. So what actually happens is 25 of your will go to life and 25 to mana. Now think about how that will play out because usually only your energy shield will get hit until it's depleted and then your life and your mana will come into play. But right now, all of your three defensive layers are in play and all of the recoveries are activated. So for example, you are leeching life at the same time as you are leeching energy shield at the same time as you're mana recouping and mana regening. Now for this to work, you need Battle Rouse, Anointed, or if you're pathed already there, uh, and you also need the Mastery with 10% mana recouped. It would be nice if you had more, but it's very hard to get in general. 
20% for me personally was enough with a little bit of mana regen. Now, one thing I want to address here at the end, especially if you're new to this game or if you're somebody who follows my builds but doesn't watch my videos, I say this all the time, but my my content I can only make for people who actually watch my videos. If you think I'm just blah, blah, blahing for 30 minutes, that's fine, but you should probably move on. And comments like this, while constructive feedback, I like the build and I will take it into endgame. However, could you keep the POB somewhat similar? Every POB is different. Inconsistency confusing. The way this was expressed, totally fine. The way some other people expressed it, maybe a little bit more ragey. But what I want you to take away here is that this is my original build guide. Let's listen to what this shaved guy is telling you. I'll put a similar disclaimer to last time where it went pretty well, right? We played Caustic Arrow. I couldn't really test it because of the Caustic Arrow the poison point. and the new tinctures. And it went really well. I overall had very positive reception, but I will just tell you right now that I cannot possibly test this really out. I can put on the Archmage support. We're talking talk about that in a second. What is he saying? It just works completely different. So while I'm going to show you gameplay, just so you know, it could, it could suck. It could potentially suck. And I'm going to go in with that promise that I'm not going to reroll anything else mm -hmm. one day before. I'm not going to reroll day one. I'm going to stick through with that. That That's all I can guarantee. Not okay. So what this shaved guy just told you in essence is that things will change most likely because it can't really be tested out. New stuff will be found. And my commitment is to make the build better. My commitment is not to give you the same build that I did on day one and just like just pretend like nothing is happening. And I understand the sentiment, but I want to tell you right now, if you want tried and true builds that never change, you should be looking to people who play the same build every league. This is not how I function. I like to play different builds. I like to explore them. And if I can't test them out, I will have to do so in day one, day two, day three. In my opinion, I think it's good that I'm changing my POBs all the time because it means I give a damn, right? I update this stuff. It is impossible to change my day one video. It's impossible to change the videos I made before. I can like I can try and update every single POB in every single YouTube description if I really want to, but it is annoying as hell and there's always stuff falling through the cracks. So from the bottom of my heart, if you cannot watch the first minute of my video, I'm so sorry to say that my content will probably not be for you. But that's about it. These are my reworks. Most likely a full build guide for this kind of defensive setup plus the frostbolt changes and everything will be coming out in the next few days whenever I actually get ready. I have to also farm some currency. I've kind of fallen behind a little bit there. But in general, that's about it. All the updated stuff will be down in the description down below as always. And uh, with that being said, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.